So we are starting. Yeah, I'm not on. Uh, you post on Instagram, can I please take it and share it on the yeah, QR code? I mean, I can, I can type the thing. Okay, good. Good. So it's recording. That means we are ready to start. So. Good. I welcome you to a short introduction about the topic of organization, the practice. It's about the situations when you have more players, less coaches, small court, big court, different times. So uh, what I want to go through with you is a little bit the process before, what brings you in that structure. And then I will show you some examples, how I propose to you how to organize it, or let's find some advices. So when we go through the setup, it's actually first we have to look what we have, right? So in the setup, it's questions, what we have in the hall, how many players we have, are they in school or not? Is everybody available? All that kind of stuff, but also um, the presidium from the club or the organization, long-term goals, all kind of that stuff. Then we need to create the goals. If you know the setup, if you know what we have, we need to create the goals. Then we create the base plan, what's to work. Then I will talk about the adaptation cycle. I will explain to you what that means. And the main part is like practice planning and the methodical working. So I will just, the first four points are a little bit introduction to bring you in the topic and to have some base where we can talk about after in the practices. When you have like questions and you are in Zoom, you can already just tell it. I will again try to share. I see now the screen was not shared. I will go again. I'm sorry for that. So good. Now it seems to work. Okay. I will just go shortly what I told you already. So these are the topics. And the last two points the practice planning and methodical working is the main point where I want to show you some examples and some ideas how you can do that. So to start, it's very important to analyze the setup. With setup, I mean like everything, starting by my team and my stuff. What do I have? Who do I have? What they are able to do? How many players I have? What level I have? This is before I put the goals in front of me and the team, I have to analyze. And the biggest part of that, the first part is the team. So if I'm getting in a professional club and I can take rid of the whole team by my own responsibility, it's a different story than when I get in a club where the team is already set up and I have to watch which players are available, what is my stuff, or like what I can do by myself. Best, of course, if I can decide everything. I can decide who is the assistant coach, who is the medical advisor, who is the physiotherapist, whatever, and I can choose the players. But in most of the cases, at least partly, you will find a setup what is already there or maybe uh, players who have long-term contract or the club already signed before you arrive or when you go a little bit in lower level regional or like amateur level it's the case you find a team which which you have just like six seven players and you have to find some more players so what it's all about that it's to find what you have and to find solution how to do it better and this is starting with the team and the stuff the same is about the organization. So I need to know, how, do I have somebody who takes care of the management of the team? Like traveling, organizing, who is responsible for money, who is responsible for like flats about the players, who is responsible for the whole? So um, who is responsible for the whole and all that stuff? So this I have to know, to who I have to talk for which topic. Like if I have to talk about getting more hold time, it's not the same person maybe when I'm talking to somebody to organize a flat thing for the players or to have a bus for their games or whatever. In the lower level, it means also when you are like regional level working and you have like junior players, whatever, it's maybe the school, which is your partner also in that situation. So the organization, it's important when you analyze the setup. 
Then, of course, coming close to the sport, it's about the practice possibilities, like how many times I have the hole, what is the hole, like it's the size of the hole, it's the availability of material. So to give you a small example, uh, the first time when I was in a professional club, we had like a game hole, and this game hole we had three times a week in the evening. In the morning, we had no single practice there in that hole. So watching the practice possibilities means I have to see when I'm working on serve reception, for example, to prepare the game, and when I can work on individual situations where it's maybe not so important to be in the right hole. And therefore, I need to know where I'm practicing, when I'm practicing, uh, with who I can practice there, what is the material, do I have one court, two courts, uh, I have to bring balls there because it's too less, whatever, it's coming from very small level to high level, like in the end, how big is the hole, if I'm professional in the club and I have like the hole for myself, it's good to know, I can go whatever I want, but most of the cases, this is not the case, so you are there and you have to organize, you know, I have practices from 8 to 10 and in the evening maybe 7 to 9. I had clubs where they only had the time in the morning 11 till 1 and then evening 8 till 10. That's a completely different planning structure than when I have the practice 8 till 10 in the morning and 3 till 5 in the afternoon. So it's also like affecting the, the health stuff, like the physical stuff, the sleeping rhythm of the players, the nutrition, all that part is depending on what I have. Best case, I can choose freely. Also, I can choose free the practices. Infrastructure, I just already touched, so I need to know what I have in the hall, around, power room. Is the power room, for example, next to the hall? Or I have to travel somewhere? Um, in the club, in the first club, I was there in Switzerland, we had like 20 minutes away, by car was the power room. So I cannot combine power and ball at the same time. Like I will lose travel time for the players or we have to organize like first ball, then we go everybody to uh, the practice in physical workout, whatever. In the other club, I had the power room in the same building as the hall. So you can switch in five minutes. That is very important to know because I'm planning maybe the season. I say every morning I want to do power and ball. Yeah, that's nice, but if I have to travel like 30 minutes to the power room, to the fitness center or whatever, and there I need to respect games, maybe it cannot be or rules. It cannot be more than 10 people from our club at the same time, or it's like just two there or somebody have to take care of them, or there is no coach allowed or whatever. All of that we lift already. So in order to plan, I need to know what are the infrastructure possibilities. And then it's the most important question. When I did the analyze, I have to ask or I have to find out what and how can I change. So coming back to my example of the hall, we, had, we didn't have the game hall in the morning. So I talked to the presidium, I talked to all I know there, to the waiter of the hall. And it turned out that there was like one uh, local club and um, local institution with the kids and with the school, whatever, are working there. And it turns out there were free spots. We just didn't know. So this was simple to solve, a lot of communication work with the right people, and we could slowly step in. That means in the first year, we got two more times in the morning in the main hall, just because we talked to the right people. So if the analyze showed me we need to have more our game hall, I try to make it possible. Maybe I reach it, maybe not, or not yet. So maybe by bringing results, you can show the city that you need more time to get in the hall, whatever. So it can be a process, but sometimes it's a solution of some minutes. So I have to try to make the, the situation, which I was analyzing, better when I need the better one. If I have a perfect situation in my analyze, nothing to change. And the second is also like, okay, if I cannot change it, how can I adapt it? Taking again the power example, so I want to work with power and ball in the same time, if it's possible. And somehow we always found a solution. This year, for example, in my center where I'm working now, we don't have a hole in the morning yet. So we had to work on that, how we bring them to ball practice or how we adapt it. So we made two groups in power. In holiday time, we can work with that because then it's all hole free. But in the normal school time, we did just two groups and we switched also with theory. So we put video analyze in the same time, 
So we won there some time. They were doing video and power and we switched after half time. So there we just decided to do that that way. So what I have, I try to change if I need it better. If I cannot change it, I need to adapt it. I think that's a, one of the most important skills you need to have as a coach to be like improvising, like improvising. What can I do? How can I change? One example was also there was in uh, Wednesday evening, we had one group of like old people doing gymnastic in the hall and they were there for 30 years already. So it was not possible like to, to say, come on, we need that spot because we are a first division team, whatever. So we need to respect traditions also. So I was with them then in the meeting and I, I found out that they asked in Wednesday morning one spot in the hall for their kids. And so we made a deal. They can get one hole in the morning and we will get one hole in the evening. So also there, it was important to be flexible. I didn't have the full court, but at least I got one court there. So if I would be stubborn and say, no, I need the whole court, I would probably not find a solution. And after two years, they were starting to practice later and we could take the earlier time and we had the full hole. So that's just an important adaptation in my eyes. So goals. It starts with the circumstances. So when we did analyze, we can start to put the goals. It's difficult to put the goal in front of you without knowing the circumstance, like environment, like we talked before, what possibilities you have, which team you have. It's nice to have the goal to win the Champions League. If you have just two practice a week and a team with seven players, it probably will be difficult, right? That sounds super easy, but it's a small things also. It's a difference if I have 12 players or 14. It's a difference if I have three hour time to practice or just one and a half. That's all like having influence on my goal. So that means I have to respect the time and the priorities in which time I need to uh, have the goal or reach the goal. That means, for example, it can be end of the season. It can be in five years. It can be next month. It can be playoffs. So it's always depending on the timeline and priorities. If the priority is to build professional players in a youth center or in a, like, can be a junior national team or a national team is creating the goal to qualify for Olympic Games or your team want to qualify for Champions League or whatever, it's a different priority and a different timeline than when you just want to be first in the qualification or you want to stay in the league or whatever. So it's a question of the term. So long term, I'd say at least two years and longer and short term, which is like months or one year. And that means there can be also system goals. System goals means like you are going in a system or an institution where the goal is already set. So when you are going in a youth like education center, the goal is clear. It's to create professional players or educate players for the next level. So then you are creating goals, how you wanna bring that to the process. So that's called some system goals. And then choosing the right goals. I mean, you have often, I see, like when I analyze the situations for other coaches when they ask or with the clubs, it's mostly you try to bring the team in your system or in your goals. And for me, it should be the other way around. So I analyze what I have, and then I see with these circumstances, this and this goal is possible. Like the example from before with the Champions League, I can come and I can say, okay, I want to have a triple block on position two or a triple block on position four, whatever. I need to have the players to be able to do that. So if I have the time to educate them, if I say I want to have in five years that triple block, it's a different story. But it means I have to have the players. Russia can do with their national team a different defense system than, for example, Japan is doing. They have different circumstances. So. If I try to put the Japanese team in the Russian system with Russian goals, it will probably not work. And that's an obvious thing, but it's the same. Like when you watch your team, your circumstances, when you want to have a quick game, you need like quick organization, you need a good quality, and you just have four times ball practice a week because you have no more holes. Maybe you cannot reach that goal in one year. So the goals, in my opinion, have to suit or respect the circumstance and the setup you have. Most of the time, the biggest mistake in my eyes is that you try to bring something what is existing in a goal you wish to have, which is not realistic, but you cannot change it. So it means again, it's about adapting. 
It's about adapting. It's about um, like reading the situation, find solutions, being creative. So to make it short, when you have goals in the youth, it's pretty clear you have more process goals than result goals. So you're working for future skills and results. So you're developing a base and knowledge over the time that one day they are able to bring a certain result, right? If it's about the result, you try to get out the best in that moment or in short term. The result can also be long term, qualification, Olympic Games, whatever. For me also in the youth, the result should never be zero. Like it's mostly when we are playing, I was explaining my girls, like I'm working in Switzerland in the youth center there, they are 15 till 20 years old. So of course you're working on the process. I want to make them being professional later. So everything is processed. But the problem is when we are playing, I want them to like win the game, but I want them also like to understand now we play that what we are able to play. And we are practicing to make this play level better. So if I go on the court and I put all the time in front of these young players, the excuse, it's fine to lose, we are doing process. Half of the team will going that way. They will understand, okay, I go in process work, it's fine if I lose, I don't have to give 100% because we are in the process. So I think result is less important in youth and it's not like, the, it should not be your main goal, but on the game, the youngsters, they need to, they need to understand that if I play, I play to win. But we can add, a, for example, a game plan or something we are practicing, we are practicing like a shoot set, whatever, and we want to see that in the game, and we put that maybe in front of them as a goal, but still the result matters. In the highest level, it's the other way around. So the result is counting more, which is logical, like you have already like professional players, and the first goal is the result. In my eyes, you cannot lose the process goals, the same like we had in the youth. So results are, of course, in that moment, the most important. You need to get a qualification. You need to win the medal. You need to stay in the league, whatever. It's mostly it's on the higher level or minimum level, it's the result goal. But how you earn that result? And there, for me, it's more related with the process than most of the teams or coaches are thinking sometimes. So it's very simple to make a team ready in September for two months, let them play every day, let them get together in the level. And in September, they will be ready to play like the championship and they win maybe the first two, three games, whatever. But when you come to end of the season and you keep on working only that short term, you will miss maybe one role to adapt yourself because you were always only on the result focus. The other teams were developing in one moment and you cannot change your game anymore or you don't have the skills to change it. So I think, the best way for me in youth and in professional volleyball, but when you turn a little bit more to professional volleyball, it's a mix of both. And of course, in the higher level, it's more balanced to the right side on the result, but it should be a big part of process too. So that means we have always that, what I call the adaptation cycle. You have a goal in front of you, which is realistic for your team, which is suiting your circumstances. So you put the plan in which time I want to reach it. Let me say again, the shoot example. I want to play shoot with my team. They were not able to do, or I have a new setter. So I plan, okay, next two weeks, next two months, or in the first round, this is the goal that we work on that. So we work on that, we analyze, and we see it worked in the time or not. We need to readjust. So maybe we see, oof, this time frame it's too short. So we have to adjust it and we go back in the circle. So like, you are working on it, you analyze. If it's working already, you have an output that you were wishing, or it's even like the output can be also you are overreaching your goal or it's not possible to reach it. But in best case, you are adjusting, you go back in the circle. And that means don't stay stubborn on like small goals or process goals. You need sometimes to adjust them. If you have the big goal to win a medal, of course, you will not adjust that in uh, overall, but you will adjust the small goals, the milestones to go there. So this cycle is important. That will bring you to the base plan. You watch the game schedule and you have uh, a timeline with milestones. So till this moment, I want to have reached this. Next moment, I want to have that. The milestone means you finish one before you go to the other. So that can mean, like this is coming from the, the project engineering in, in economics. Like it means you finish one milestone and then you go to the next, but the timeline is not fixed. 
your goal is to finish that milestone and you will not jump over it. So if your goal is in February, for example, to have that or that state with your team and you don't reach it till then, you have to make a decision. Is this milestone like the key to my long-term goal? You have to respect it. If this milestone is just some process goal and you have to go for results, you jump over it, you set new milestones. And that means you have a certain guideline and this guideline also had like a safety rope. So the guideline means whenever I'm in the practice as a coach, probably you lift uh, the same like I was doing. In some moments you lose the guideline. You are in the practice and you see so many things you want to change. And in that moment you risk to lose your like milestones and your plan you set up because you see like thousand small things you want to change at the same time. And you are like losing yourself in that situation. So, for example, you are preparing the situation that in three months you can play overload position four, or you have your new defense system set up. And then it comes to your mind, you see the players, they are moving uh, like on the set, the fingers are not connected, or you see a surf situation which you don't like. It's sometimes hard, but in this moment, if you want to reach the goal, you have to put that maybe on your to-do list, but you will point to another priority in that moment. And you cannot save the world in one practice or in one year. That's why you need time for everything. But it means in this moment, from time to time, it's good to watch your guideline and like your safety rope is like, I don't know what to do. And in that moment, you have the plan set up and I say, listen, whatever happens, I keep that road. This is in physical part. It's the easiest way. You have there the program, your body's reacting that way. And in technical, it's more difficult. It's difficult to watch a way to keep your eyes off from a problem you see and to focus on another one, because like we coach are all the same. We see we want to have the best in that situation. But sometimes we have to respect the priorities and we cannot save everything at the same time. That's what I also try to teach the players. With our youngsters there, like I see every day, thousand things, what they can change. But we put the priorities. So once the, fin the season is finished, we put three months of individual work. What we gain there is good. When we go back to season, there are other goals. Then next summer, we have again three months time to work individually. So that's the process. And so it turns me to one part, which I told you is the main part for me, this is the met methodical working. So it means which way you're working in the practice. Of course, every coach has their own system, their own philosophy. But for me, there are some points which I think should be the base of the daily work. And I start with the meaning, like I will just give you some examples, some principles. For me, I have a certain importance of base exercises. Base exercises means there are exercises which you and your players know exactly what they are for, what you are doing, how they are working. And it's just save time to set them up and you have maybe for serve reception a base exercise, for like couple warm up, for setters liberals, you have base exercises which you are setting up. I will show you after some examples, but it means you will never lose focus time or time to organize because the organization is clear. You can focus good on the touch, on the quality, on the repetitions, on the time. These exercises I mostly work on with a time frame. So I'm stopping the time that they have all the same repetitions. And this is only working if they know the exercise and there is no confusion about anything. So it's the same like you are a marathon runner. You know how to run. If you don't know how to run, I cannot work with you on methodical parts. So like, for example, I say now it's, it's uh, the speed work. Now we work on pace. Now we work on the heart rate, whatever. You need to know how to run. So it's good if you know how to run before you go in the repetitions. And that's the same in volleyball in my eyes. Then all the question methodical working is the split like between individual work and teamwork. Mostly, I hear when I talk with coaches, especially like young coaches in, in seminars or like in clinics, they're always afraid, like, I don't have time to do individual work. Or if I work individual, I cannot work on the team. I will show you some examples where I think it's possible to combine both. It's just a question what you tell them as a coach, where you put the goal in front of you. So they can work as a team on the court but with individual uh, goals in front of them or with individual touches or you are coaching one player individual in a team workout. It sounds simple, but that's one point where you can like follow a player for longer time. You put the goal in front of that player 
it's technically or positional wise and then in the game practice where it's about efficiency where it's about tactics you still can give that player the workout we do mostly like player coaching player when we are playing like i put a lot of time the same players together even the youth players so outside hitter is watching outside hitter and give a feedback what she sees to have another eye or for example we are filming every single practice every practice I, i'm taping i put it on the on our server and the girls can watch it. It's good to compare also. So I can give them an order. And if I, I'm the only coach, I don't have like time to prepare all 12 players or 14 or 16. So it's also good to educate them to use the time at home, for example, for their own analyze. And one thing for me, it's very important. Give all the important situations, same priority. So when you are, for example, doing game practices, how many times it happens when you are playing that you start on setter one or you start on set of three, whatever, and you play for rotations. And when you're just playing end set games or this kind of organization, you lose half of the rotations because you have no control of it. It means you have, for example, in set of four, there is a serve mistake. So you did never practice the side out in set of four just because it was a serve mistake. Yes, on the game, it happens like this, but it can be that you are stuck on the game in set of four situation. And that brings you to the question, okay, like how can I practice that? You go back to mental work. You say, okay, we need to be ready. We need to get out of that. But in my eyes, you need to have the security. You need to have the confidence. So that means I feel the same confidence in setter four, like in setter one. I feel the same confidence in working overload or open side. So whatever I ask my player to be able to adapt in the game or to go out of it mentally, they need to have the security in that way. So the, with the rotation, it's the most simple thing. It happens often that one team has a, a weak rotation. So either the result is for the coaches to work only on that rotation, or sometimes they say, okay, we'll leave it beside because it's not working. And I believe in that, that you have to bring your players to the level that they are going like step-by-step step to all situations with the same priority. So that's why I'm repeating them often. That's why I like more rotation games with a lot of repetitions in one situation and for everything the same, like 30 balls on setter one, 30 balls on setter two, whatever, or three out of five in one rotation. And then we go further instead of just like normal playing. So when I give you the example, I don't know, I hope the connection is good on your side to see it without too many like stops in the video but the links are provided. This is out of a practice. We worked on the setter call which shoot out of defense, out of free ball, out of reception. So we keep the whole time, whatever we were playing, the same setter call. So the players could adapt to it. What happens if the middle is late? What happens if the middle have to adapt? Because back row players are adapt to that. It's about the speed, it's about the block. Where I put my defense in that situation, so if I ask them in tactical way, we play shoot overload and they don't have like the experience for that from many, many repetitions. I believe that this experience bring them like it's lacking them. So it means they are doing mistakes because they didn't have enough situations to work on that. Time. So we have just, you see, whatever it's, it's reception, it's free ball, it's down ball, it's defense. Middle is always shoot. We have the overall situation and all the team is busy with that setter call all the time. So then, of course, we did the same with the other set of calls. So I will show you this example with like the middle is going behind. So it's the same exercise. It's the same like exercise, ball is coming, it's serve. It's no matter what's the counting, you can count every ball, but it's everything with the middle running C out of defense, out of uh, system, out of reception, out of free ball, whatever. So it just brings them to as many repetitions on that situation that they can feel comfortable because I want to tell them on the game when we are like working on that I can say okay we switch to set the call middle is short behind and they have to feel confident about everything what happens on bad reception it's simple to work on a good reception on the middle C but the players have to be ready what happens and the opponent when you go in that combination way so you see the girls here on the videos they are 15 till like 19 years old and we are working a lot on that things to give them the experience because they didn't play like 10 years as professional players. 
So for them, I can maybe say, you go five times, um, shoot, overload and practice, and they know because they did it. So this is the last set to call in the same exercise, middle is running A. So they have to adapt all the time to this one situation. I have like four middle blockers. So I need to turn all four middle blockers in that situation. I have two opposites. So I put one with set front, one with set back. I have like four outside hitters. I want to have them on the net in that situation. I want to have them in the back row. So all of that situations, they need to adapt. But for this, in my opinion, I need to give the important situations the same priority. So we were at the same on this set of call like on the other in basically to learn it. Of course, there will be adaptation that in the season, one thing is not running, I make this maybe a little bit more, but I don't put the others completely out. So like I explained to you, for example, not only in the one situation or not only set her back, that's also something I see often, like a lot of times it's always starting with set her back and you run out of time. So you stop the exercise and you didn't work on set the front situations. So you can start next time maybe with the set the front, what you couldn't finish like last time. And like this, you can go on methodically easily. And the next point from the methodical point of view, for me, it's very important, the influence of the intensity and the repetition management. And that's related back to the analyze of the setup. When you think back, like how we started, the setup, it's important. We have in Switzerland, for example, normal, like in amateur level, you have often restricted hold times. I guess most of you have the same situation. We have there, for example, you have just 90 minutes of hold time. So in my eyes, you need to use that 90 minutes the best way. So you have to be efficient. So one situation can be, for example, we are not warming up in the hole. I don't want to spend warm up time in the hole where we have time for the ball. So we have 90 minutes the hole. I lose 50 minutes for warm up. I lose 50 minutes for cold, cool down. So I have like one hour of working time. No, my working time is 90 minutes. So I warm them up outside in the like outside the locker room, in the building somewhere, whatever, and cool down it's the same way. So I think it's important that we use the time what we have or the op options we have at a maximum we can do. The same for the repetitions. That means if I have only 60 minutes time or 90 minutes time, I let them play way more like repetitions and it's a higher intensity in small groups, for example, than when I have to hold for four hours. So it's depending on what I have. It's depending on my analyze, how I can work with them. And it's a big, big difference if you work in short time, higher intensive, or you work in long time with less intensity. And that's bringing like also, it's not only from the physical part that they are tired or not tired, it's also mental. If I have a lot of repetitions, it drives me to another mental state. Then if I have one repetition, they have to be good. So if I have, a lot of repetitions from time to time i need to work on that single repetition mode otherwise the players come to the mode that eh, if it's good or bad don't matter i have another chance and on the game you don't have other chance so you have to watch out that you are working only in one direction no matter which one you have long time you work on single repetitions they lack experience of the touch you have short time you are going only on million repetitions you lack the mental state to have important balls played right so that i think it's what I think it's important in the influence when you have like intensity or repetition management. So you have to prepare them to train and you have to prepare them to compete. And that's like, for me, very important the organization matters. It's about my organization, what I'm doing as a coach, how they are practicing. So if they know exactly what to do in which situation it's efficient. If just the people are standing around, no problem if I have five hours, but if I have just one and a half hour, I want to use the maximum time. And we are coming to the examples when I have just like I'm alone and I have 16 players, one court. It's important how I organize and still I want to work on it. So for me in the organization, it's also the question how I combine important relations between positions. For me, the setters and liberals together, I work with them every day, no matter in which exercise, no matter what's the goal of this practice, they get more than 50% of the week whole time. In my practices, they get together. Libero and Setter, for me, they are like responsible for around 70% of the first and second ball. So they have to understand each other blind. They have to communicate with each other blind and they have to feel each other like the same way like a middle blocker needs to feel the setter, but even more. 
This is a relation which you can adapt with some repetitions, but this have to be blind, this combination. Of course, there are other relations, for example, setter and middle blocker in attack, but also setter and middle blocker in block that I can watch as a setter over where is the block player. So I practice the peripheral view, for example. So there are relations which are very intense and there are relations which are more tactically. So this is also what I have to like respect when I work it out. And I will say like, for me, this is one of the most important thing like efficiency, no waste of time. Most of us have too less time in the, in the practice or like space or whatever. So I think it's important to use that time in the maximum way. And that's like, I will show you some examples after. And I think when you go back to the analyze what we have, what we do, what is the plan, what you're practicing, make sure you have the same values as your team. If you in your mind want to bring them to Champions League and they in their mind want to drink a beer after practice, it's different. So to clear the values, it's very important. Otherwise, all your goals and all your methodical work will not point to the goal you want to. And if you have a clear structure and communication, it's easier to follow. That's why base exercises, for example, are important. They need some like habits that are the same and they need some changes to keep them working. Always the same, it's we are human beings, we are lazy by nature. When once we don't need to change anything, we will keep it all life. So we as a coaches also need to bring them from time to time in uncomfortable situations by changing some small things, but still a base is bringing a lot of confidence. So be efficient in the organization. And I would say like love what you have, create the best learning developing surrounding with what you have. So I can cry the whole year about what is missing. And I can explain you like a lot of examples. Like when I was working in the Swiss national team, there were not so many players there. It like I could in seven years do two times the selection in the national team, two times. So it means two times I had more players than I could take in the other like thousand times. It was exactly the amount of players. We were going in university in games with 12 players, three setters, three liberals because no, no other else was like there. So I can go every evening and I cry that I don't have other situations or like I wish to have, but this in that moment, I could not change. So I need to work on that, that we get more players or how I can convince them. But in that situation, those players who are there, they deserve that we work the maximum out of this situation. So either I go there and I'm just complaining all the time or I see, okay, we have three setters, three liberals. That's what we have. Let's work it out to make it better. Let's maybe put the libero on a surf player who can bring something in a team in the game. Let's put the setter maybe on position four to try if she's the better block player as the other, whatever. Everybody has a strong point. So in that moment, like, I think it's important. The players, they are there or the organization or the coaches or the stuff, they deserve your maximum effort to do in that situation. And they don't deserve you in that situation as a coach to say, fuck, how I can work with this. This is still too low gym or whatever. Change the rule, put that the roof is allowed to play or whatever, like you will find the option, but don't allow situations what you cannot change to destroy what you have in your hands. So it means the end of all, it's like unchangeable prerequisites and conditions define the goal. So if you cannot change the whole size or the team size or the budget or whatever, this means you have limited op options for the goal. So your maximum of your goal is changing at the meaning of the unchangeable things. So whatever you can change, do it, but you cannot, you have to define the goals. Good, so I'll show just some examples of challenges. What we are coaches, we are like pointing to. One is we have just like one coach, one court and a lot of players. So in that video, for example, this is about the setters to show. I have 16 players, I have one court there. And as you see, I have there one, like assistant coach, I have an injured player. So, like I said, I wanna work every day on liberal setter connection. So the others, they have their duties to play. And you see on the other side of the court, like the injured player sitting from the box on the libero, like simple setup from exercise, but they all have a game, uh, like a goal in front of them. So one setter, when we talk about different levels, 
One said that she's 15, the other said that she's 19. One set to play for one year setter, the other one for four years. So they have different goals in the same exercise. One have to go for jump sets, for example. The other one is standing. One has to put speed in the ball. The other one has to put precision in the ball, whatever. Libero is the same. One is 15, the other is 20. So now the one Libero is behind in the court there doing the practice. Now she's on the court. And the others, they have a clear structure. So that's why the importance of the organization is so high. The other girls, like, they don't need a coach in that time. And it's not that they do everything all the time perfect, but they have a goal in front of them. They need to attack two, three times in a row, whatever. Or they have sometimes a challenge to achieve, like against each other, who can keep up the ball longest. Or they are finished when they did 50 good touches. So in order to be able to work individually in that part, in that setup, now setters are working on position, but the others are doing like uh, pepper drills. So it's important that those who are doing pepper drills, they know exactly what to do. So I have to set it up. Otherwise I cannot work individually in the practice with the others. So here also, I'm working on the other side. The setters are working now alone and the other players are working alone. We'll bring them together later. So that are like important organization things. So it's possible. I can do the same with middle blockers. I have the net. I put on the net the middle blockers, the other can do ball control. Middle blockers can go for a block, can go for a jump, can go for approach. Uh, the same with receivers. I can take one third of the court and they go in the reception there. The other one, I want to practice game situations, but I don't have 12 players. So that's the situation. Here's a video from one uh, coach's clinics, which was streamed there. And I will just let it run. Like we had more than 12 players in that situation. But as you can see, the players are missing. There is no position four on the left side. Here you can see there's no position four. And on the other side, there is no position one. And the players which are outside, they are coaching. You see now like middle is going to the middle and tell her what she saw. And on the other side, you see the outside hitters here. They have the communication. And meanwhile, I can explain to the players. So they, everybody has some thing to work on. And they know exactly what it is. It's a simple exercise. It's shoot overload against C overload. So this is again the repetition, what I was talking before. We are repeating on both sides one and the same situation. Two options, so it's not too many options, but still options to decide because volleyball is all about decisions. So the first ball, the setter can choose, and the second ball, she have to play to this player who didn't play. So it means now all the players are like, acting and working on two situations, not more. So now it's not important that there is a position four player who take that ball because I work on the block and on the right side in the court. So you can count in that um, like game situation the same if you would have six, six or four, four, or I put six against the complete block situation. So that's like, like my philosophy to work on that kind of things I make exercises related to a position or to a situation. I will draw you after quick other examples. If you don't have 12, there is always an option. It's also about like players. I talk about like no time for individual work. Yes, you can play all practice, but still you can work individually. If you have 16 players, you let the others play, you take one out, they go on the wall. I have three setters. If you play six, six, one setter is out. So she can serve and, or she have like 12 different exercises to work on her weaknesses, on her forces. So I just tell her, you are doing that exercise for the hands. You are doing the footwork exercise. So I need to build up this one that I can work later individually. So the other situation we have, it's also in professional volleyball. We have sometimes players who are studying or working partly, or if they are young, they still have school. So they miss part of the practice or even some practice full and you still have a team to develop. So one situation is, for example, on Monday I have in the first half hour, just five players. And it's not like five setters or whatever. It's, um, I just give you some freedom to mix players. Good. So it's not that I have like, you know, four setters or two liberals or whatever that I can make individual position practice. I have. One time, one setter, two middles, one time, two liberals, four, uh, four outside hitters, whatever. So this is every day different. So, and then same, love what you have. I have in that practice, two middles, one libero, one setter. 
perfect. I work on the relation between the setter and the middles. Next time in the same practice, the setter is missing. It's perfect, and I will go on the like defense situations, block situations. So I have what I have, and I use this time to make it individually run at a high level. And I think that's important, just to take what you have and do the best out of it. And the other one I said already in the situation with the setters before. I have three setters, they are in different level, like different age, different experience, different level of like actual state. Still, they are playing completely with other girls. So we have 15 to 20 year old girls. You can imagine they are like at least four different levels. But this can happen also in professional level. You have like youngsters to include or integrate in the team, but you have also professional players who are not yet on the same level. So you give them different goals in that way. And I think that's the adapting what is important. This is not like some point to run away. I cannot work on combination. I cannot work on 6-6 six, six because I have two players who cannot work on that or they are not able to do. So I work individually to bring them there or I limit the options for them. For example, with young middle blockers, when I play with them, I give the other teams or the outside hitter who is more exp like experienced, I give the player outside hitter to attack against the weaker middle blocker, but the middle blocker knows where the ball is coming. So she has a little advantage. She can prepare herself better in order also to get some like success feelings. So I will just stop here the screen sharing and I hope you can see here when I'm drawing, I'm trying. So one situation, what I have, what I built up, you saw before on the video. So I am playing, for example, that half of the court against each other, like shoot, position four, C, position two. So in the moment, I'm not focusing that one. So it doesn't matter if I have just six or eight players, but for those, I can ask the super high level of the competition there. They can play against each other. And it means, yes, here's a player missing. And of course they can attack here and there is no, like nobody, but I can adapt the block situation, but they are practicing now like four simple situations all the time. And then I think it's important to get this confidence that they have something in hands with repetitions because it's also part from mental practice. The more repetitions you do from one, the more confidence you are. You went through a situation 10 times, it gives you like, you are more calm after that one. You are first time in a situation, it makes you maybe more nervous. So about organization with what I told you as an example, I have a lot of players. I have just one court and I want to work specifically. You saw the exercise with the setters before. Like I said, you can put like middle blockers here. You can put boxes for the block. And sometimes we put like here, not only couples, but also defense work. Sometimes you can put here another net. If you don't have a net like this, you can take a rope, you mark it. This is enough to play the ball over and put the ball control situation. This is like sometimes we forget the easiest thing. Even on professional level, we had like one court and we put here like a second net. I had one net from the school and I fix it somehow with ropes, whatever. And this net doesn't have to be perfect, but for the middle blockers, they need a normal net or the setters need a normal net. But here I can work on ball control over the net. For ball control, this is enough. It doesn't have to be like in perfect setup. Uh, so there is like, and especially in the lower level, or if I have just 90 minutes of time and I have amateurs or like, just the youngsters coming there. It's important that they have the touch, that they have the relations to organize it. So that's why I say like, sometimes you need to be creative to create it. Nobody has like miracles and just all the time, like 10 courts and 10 coaches and 1000 balls. So I think like these situations can help you. So they have the goal to work on it and they have a specific goal. Or like I showed you before, middle blockers, I can add them to the setters and liberals. So they are moving on the sets or the setter have to watch where is the mill blocker standing. And this I can work in this six meters. I have another six meters and six meters here for the other players. So maybe here I have five players and here outside I have six, I have six. I can do up to 17 players like this in one hole. Or the other, what we are doing often, it's like making the small groups, combining physical work. So, if we have longer time, three hours time, but just one court, like I have one group here down on the run because they are working kettlebells, for example. And then I have two groups here working 
together or on situations which are game related, they can even play or whatever. So I can have here like six players here, six players here, six players. It's very simple, but sometimes we forget and we just put six, six and we let here waiting position, three players, three players. And in 90 minutes, they are maybe 30 minutes doing nothing. And the other situation is like I explained, if they know on what they are working individually, that's exactly the moment where they can do it. I have here around the space, middle blockers can do footwork here. Setters can work on the corner to put the ball on the wall with the hands or like work on the jump sets, whatever. There are so many possibilities. We just have to be creative in that part, I guess. And this is sometimes we are too much limited. So by analyzing the setup, I can analyze and uh, the situations and I can plan the practice easier in that way. So that's like one of the most important thing that is just love what you have and do the best out of it. And it's everybody has uh, some struggles in the practice, in the like games or whatever, or play aside. Like you have not even number of players. It's very simple, but like, especially when you are an amateur level, everyone's complaining, like I cannot do one couple of work, whatever. So I think this creativity, this, this uh, improvisation is one of the biggest skill we need to have as a coach, but this is based on analyze. And without the analyze behind, I'm just lost. Like I said, you need this guideline. You need that safety rope in order to, to know, okay, if you want to play quick, if you want to have that things run, I think it's important that we organize it that way. When I have six, six, or like I said before, maybe I just four players here, six against four, whatever. But I have to go that they are able to play quick in the season. So it's up to me to bring the rhythm of the practice that they can play quick. So all the work around is related with the speed they are doing. Or I play four, six, and here it's like one player moving for defense, whatever I have in the court there. So I think that's, that's the most important part, but without analyze, you cannot do that. That's my opinion. Like just coming in the hall and say, okay, like I have this, I have that. You lose the goals out of your mind if you are not like using the analyze. So you are going day by day by day and end of the year and analyze, you see, this could have been better. This could have been better. This you have to do all the time. But if you are not using the analyze it before and try to change and adapt it, you lose efficiency. And in my ways, this is the, the most dangerous thing. You lose or you waste time. You have whole time, which is limited. And half of this time you lose by not being efficient. And that's like my advice to use that analyze how you can go more efficient in that situation. How many players you have, how you can adapt. Can you bring a player from the youngster team? You have some player from the team which is practicing after you to come. You have one player from the team before you to stay. Or like one coach maybe can stay 50 minutes longer to help you. But that means maybe you need to come 50 minutes early to help him too. And then you have maybe for 50 minutes an assistant in the repetition drills for the libero and then he can go. You win already something. So in order just to stay there and say, I have no assistant, I have just one or I have just 12 players. Mostly there are some simple solutions for it. But mostly you also have to give something for it. It's not that you wait and just complain and get. And that's like my philosophy, of course. On the higher level, you can ask for it or you have like money to buy it. But I believe if you work like this together, you get for everybody a benefit. And then it ends in a situation like I told you what was in the Basel and the Swiss club before with that one from the gymnastics. You get more opportunities because you have a good level of communication. And that's the same for the organization of the practice. You get more space, you get more options, you get maybe one coaching option more, whatever, just because you are like, open-minded and you analyze the setup. So this is the, the biggest advice I, I can give you or I want to give you. Analyze the setup and then like adapt it to your needs. And love what you have, organize, it's always possible. So I, I limit the options to work enough repetitions on one simple situation in order to give them thousand options and do one option one time. I want more repetitions. It takes me longer. To be honest, it takes me longer. So when you work like this, we will not be ready in September when we start in uh, July. That's for me, that's the consequence. But I know it, the player knows it, and we are back in the setup of an allies. My president, my club structure, my federation, they also have to know it. Otherwise they will expect from me results in September, which cannot be there in that way of working. And then like, there will be a disappointing or you get fired or whatever, because it's not everybody in the same like boat. So you did a misanalyze of the setup. 
If this is not possible that way, or you analyze shows, okay, president wants result from September, whatever, you have to adapt the plan, or this is not the, the situation you want to be in. But I think that's important. You cannot go alone that way without having them all in your boat. And that's starting with analyze of setup and then with the change. And this what you cannot change, adapt it. And that brings you to every single practice, not the other way around. That's what I believe how it's working. Because in practice, you are adapting all the time. It's working, it's not working. You need to do it longer, you need to do it shorter, whatever. That's all the time. But this adaptation to be able to do it in the practice, it's happening way before like I showed you in the, present, in the present before. So that's uh, a little bit of the conclusion of the whole story. And uh, we'll send you later also, I put it in the comments section, this playlist on YouTube from the videos I showed you, I have there more, so you can watch a little bit like examples. Like I said, I'm like, we are filming every practice that gives a lot of information also like how we organize and also sometimes to watch back and see, okay, why it failed in that time and you see, it wasn't efficient or that player could have done better or they can compare between each other. So this is the one thing I can just advise you from time to time, make the videos of the practices also if you have the possibilities. And I will share, of course, the videos from the practices on YouTube with you that you can check a little bit more. And of course, you're welcome to ask questions or like send me questions. I will answer them with a pleasure. Can you just review the main points of everything you spoke about for the preview people on Instagram? Mm -hmm. I was just going to screen. So. Good, so the main thing like to watch back, we were speaking about the setup analyze, which is very important to start over. So you need to know what you have around you, including team stuff, infrastructure, everything. Then out of this, you can create goals, which are suiting that setup. It means they are realistic to reach. From this, you create the base plan, how you wanna create that, like reach that goals, including how long you do what in the practice and how you try to reach it. Then you're in the adaptation cycle, like I call it like this, because you're recycling all the time, you're planning the actual state with analyze, and then you go on in the same goal, you change it. And then out of this, you go to the final practice planning and adaptation, and you include it methodically. So it's not hazard how it's coming out, it's following like some methods, how you get like some situations running better. Good. Thank you for watching and glad to see you another time in some hall or another meeting. Thank you very much. Also, listen for me.